So ma'am, what brings you here? So doctor, these days I have been having issues with memory and I can't seem to remember many things. And it's affecting my social connections and job a lot. I have also been forgetting people lately and I can't remember the new people I meet. So what should I do? So students, hope you guys heard her complaints. We have a lecture on physiology in first year. சாப்பிட்டனானே தெரில என்கிட்ட கேட்குற பத்தியா குட் மார்னிங் ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் நவ் டுடேஸ் அவர் கிளாஸ் இஸ் அபவுட் ஃபிசியாலஜி ஆஃப் மெமரி பேசிக்கலி வாட் இஸ் மெமரி and it is defined as the process by which the knowledge of the work is encoded stored and later retrieved the memory is uh, classified into three types based on the duration of storage in your brain and they are short term memory intermediate memory and long term now let's see about short term versus long term the duration of storage of information in your brain in short term memory is uh, from like minute minutes to hours while in long term memory it's hours to years and the capacity and the capacity of uh, store information stored in long uh, short term memory is very small while in long term memory very large information are stored the in- entry into storage uh, short term memory is by verbalization while in long term memory they are by practice punishment and reward the uh, access to storage in short term memory is rapid while in long term memory it's slow the mechanism of storage in short term memory is by formation of few small uh, information uh, traces while in long term memory it's by formation of uh, memory engrams by uh, structural changes in the presynaptic membrane okay students now let's talk about long term long term memory is divided into two types declarative and non declarative and what is declarative it is mean by con- conscious or intentional recollection of uh, previous experiences and information it is also known as expressive memory it is further divided into two types episodic and semantic Episodic means memory associated uh, to your uh, special life events such as uh, your birthday or your first day to med school that you would uh, remember for a long time, right? And semantic memory. It is, these are memories associated with the facts, words and concepts. Now let's talk about non-declarative memory. Non-declarative memory is a type of memory in which your previous experiences helps in performance of a task without conscious awareness of your experience. of your previous experience it is uh, also known as implicit memory and it is further divided into procedural classical conditioning and non associative memory Back in 1901, 51-year-old Mrs. August Dieter was brought into the Asylum for Lunatics and Epileptics Germany by her husband Mr. Dieter and has been admitted there since then. Upon conversing with Mrs. August, Dr. Alzheimer noticed confabulation, a memory disorder symptom in which made-up stories fill in any gaps in memory. Good morning Mr and Mrs Dieter. Mr Dieter, can you please brief me about Mrs Dieter and what she's been going through and if she's been portraying any change of character? Yes doctor, she has problems with memory and remembering. She keeps forgetting things and gets confused. This made my family suffer a lot. I don't know what to do doctor. Did she by any chance receive a blow to the head? No doctor. Any history of alcohol consumption? Absolutely no doctor. I'll have to have a conversation with Mrs. Dieter alone. Can you please excuse us? Okay, doctor. Can you tell me your name? It's August. Your family name? It's August. Your husband's name? I believe it's August. Your husband? Oh, my husband. Uh Are you married? Mm, not sure. How old are you? Probably 50. Where do you live? Oh, you have been to our place. Where are you now? Here, everywhere. Where are you now at this moment? Uh, I don't know. Where is your bed? Where should it be? Moving forward to 1906, five years after consulting with Dr. Alzheimer, August passes away from an infection due to bed sores.
Dr. Alzheimer's extensive study led to the discovery of three histological hallmarks of Alzheimer's. Firstly, amyloid plaques, extracellular protein aggregates of primarily amyloid protein. These proteins are now insoluble and have fallen out of solution. Secondly, neurofibrillary tangles, intracellular protein tangles mostly made up of tau proteins. Thirdly and lastly, inflammation. Inflammatory contribution is now an area of high interest for medical conversations and research. Okay, so we need to take a few tests for you. So if you could please wait outside, our nurse will come and assist you. Okay, doctor. Thank you very much. What's the issue now, doctor? So basically, there are three stages of Alzheimer's: mild, moderate, and severe. So as we can observe, she was very proactive, and she came to us immediately after she found out she has memory problems. So we can conclude that she is in the early stages, but it is generally tough to classify which stage they are in because it might overlap. So now, can one of you guys tell me what are the characteristics of the stages? Well, the initial stage includes short-term memory loss. The person may behave strangely. They may lose their belongings. They may not be able to perform tasks in social or work settings. The second stage is typically the longest. The person may completely change their behavior. They may get angry and not be able to converse properly. Damage to nerve cells may also cause them to not perform tasks individually. The final stage is very severe. The person's behavior might change completely. They may have significant personality loss, and they may require extensive care. Okay, now Sachin, do you remember any of the treatment plans? The best time period for the drugs to work on uh, work on patients having Alzheimer's or Alzheimer's is the early and mid stages, doctor. Mm -hmm. So uh, we suggest galantamine, uh, rigastamine, and uh, dopamine for the patients for uh, for the patients who are in uh, a moderate to uh, early to moderate stages. Uh, this helps in this helps in controlling or reducing the cognitive uh, cognitive and behavioral changes. And then there's memetamine, uh, uh, which helps in, uh, is given to patient, uh, is given to patient who are uh, suffering and uh, who are suffering from severe and uh, uh, high, uh, high and severe uh, Alzheimer, Alzheimer's. Uh, this helps in uh, them doing uh, their daily functions a little bit more longer. Okay, very good. So there's also a new drug called aducanumab, which works by basically decreasing the you know the amyloid plaque. And then after that, it slows down the progression of the disease. So well done, both of you guys. I see both your memories are working. You guys can take leave now.